Welcome to Free Life Chapel, where we help you discover and live the free life in Christ. My name is Bria, and we are so excited that you decided to join us here today. Make sure that you check out our website, freelifechapel.org, to find out more about who we are and how you can be a part. And if you're in the Central Florida area, come visit us in person for some faith and fun. But until then, we have an amazing message in store for you, so check this out. We're dealing with another one of Jones's movies, the final one. It just came out called The Dial of Destiny. Okay, good, good. Week number one, we dealt with Raiders of the Lost Ark, and, and we talked about the Ark Covenant of Salvation that we have. Week two was the Temple of Doom. Uh, but we talked about that being the heart issue, the attack of the heart, that sanctification, a lifestyle set apart, honoring God. That, that was week two. Week three was the last crusade. And we talked about the spirit-led life, being able to, to, to the rope of hope. But the swing is a thing. And you got to take that leap sometimes and trust the one who's over you, not what's under you. And so we talked about that last week as well. Today we're going to get with, deal with the dial of destiny. And, and, and this, 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 this dial of destiny is an interesting movie. It's Jones is dealing with, once again, his Nazi enemies. And they've discovered two different halves of this time dial. That if you get the two halves together, you can dial back and you can go back in time and appear in another era. And they were shooting for, the, for 1939 and accidentally hit the year 2012 B.C. And it kind of goes from there. I, so it just came out, so I'm not going to spoil the movie for you. I'm going to leave it hanging right there. But it's interesting, dealing with time travel. Have you ever, if, if, if you had the opportunity, how many would love to time travel? Have you ever thought about time traveling like it? Would you go forward or backward? Y'all go backward. Okay, go backward. Okay. Uh, on, on the count of three, tell me what era, what year would you go to? One, two, three. 90. Me too. Me too. That's where I would go also. I, yeah. so, some of y'all say, back when I was 18 years old, I'd do some things over again. Yeah, well, okay, good. Okay, yeah. There's, it's, it's, it's interesting time travel. Well, I want you to know as believers, we got some time travel on the way. Yeah. Oh, yes, we do. Don't look at me in that attitude. I'm gonna, we're going to go here. We, we, we've got some things to plan for that there's about to be some time travel, but we're not going backward. We're going forward. We're headed to a place called heaven. Heaven. Everyone just on the count of three say that word. One, two, three. Heaven. See, some of y'all didn't even wait for me to count. You just had to spit it out. I, I get it. It's kind of exciting. Do you know that there's more than 700 times heaven is referenced in the Bible? It's, it's not a side issue. It's a place that's wonderful, a place of hope. It's a place that, 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 that we, it, it's in our future. There's, there's reward waiting on us there. We don't, we don't really hear much said about heaven. We just use it more as a metaphor. And Man, that was heavenly, or man, that was like heaven. And I, I, we, we, we kind of throw it out. But, but the Bible speaks to this, and I think it's critical that we as a church, as, as believers, as Christ followers, or people who are at least shopping Jesus, understand that there's more to life than just what you're living right now. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 2 through 4. And by the way, at Free Life, if it's your first time, uh, everybody reads the highlighted parts, and then I read the other parts. But Colossians 3, 2 through 4, here's what it says. 1, 2, 3. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears then you also will appear with him in glory. The writer of Colossians is saying this. He's saying it's real easy to become distracted by life, to be, get consumed by your job, the house, social media, climbing a career ladder, education, dating, Married, raising kids. It's easy, and, and there's nothing wrong with engaging all of those things. Uh, in investments, yes, enjoy life, do those things. But, but you and I are always to keep one eye on something higher and greater. And that in the foundation of our life, there's a different focus. That, that's what it's, set your minds on things above, 
not on things below. It's amazing that if we caught a, caught a proper perspective of life based on the Bible, there'd be a lot of things that would not bother us the way they do right now. There's a lot of things that would not grab our attention or create drama in our mind or our heart. You ever just been scrolling through social media and got angry with what you read? Yeah. How you know if you hadn't read it, you wouldn't have got angry? That's all I got to say. Let's just come right back to church now. I'm just saying, change your focus. Watch this. From temporary to the eternal. Stop focusing on what's going to be here for just a moment and get your eyes on what's going to last forever. As long as you can keep your eyes there, there is a hope, there's a strength, there's an ability to get over and get through things that we're facing here right now. Stop just focusing on now and focusing on the big picture, the picture that the Word speaks of called heaven. As far as you and I know, this rope does not have an end to it. It just keeps on going. It goes and it goes. It circles Polk County. It runs around the state of Florida, runs across the nation, crosses the ocean. But I'm not worried about that. You and I, with all of that, get consumed with that. This is the timeline of eternity. And you and I are living not like, oh, we're living. <laughs> we are so consumed with this that we don't even realize this. This is, you're living a speck a moment, all of your life, all of what we call time, the calendar from, from Genesis 1 all the way till Jesus returns is that part right there compared to what eternity is going to be. Why are we letting that run our world when this is our reality? This is what I'm trying to tell you, and this is what the writer is saying. I need you to set your eyes on things above. Stop looking right here because you're going to get consumed with what's temporary and you're going to miss what's eternal. And when you change your perspective, you begin to make different decisions in life. It rearranges all of that. When you think of heaven, what do you think about? Whatever you imagine just now, it's better. You and I don't have the capacity to conceptualize all that heaven is, but the Bible does give us some things to look at and think about. And I want to run through some things real quick and just kind of give you a, ref a refresher course. Maybe you've never heard this, but I want to give you some things to understand about heaven. Number one, here you go. What is it about heaven? You're not going to miss this life when we get there. Some of y'all, some of y'all think this is so good. And we're missing this right here. You're, you're, you're not going to miss this life. Nothing you've ever seen or experienced is ever going to compare to heaven. Ever, ever, ever. Can I tell you something? Once you fly first class, you never miss coach. I don't walk on. If I ever get to fly first class again, I don't walk on and go, oh, is there no way I could get back there today? They serve peanuts back there. They serve food up here. Do you understand? It's like it's a, the, the big old nice seat, ladies, back, all that kind of thing. They serve you on this little tray, all that kind of fun. But can I tell you something, uh, something else I've learned? After you've flown private, your definition of first class changes. Because you ain't got to go through TSA. They don't have to touch you like they know you. I mean, like all that kind of stuff going like, like, like I, I, get to, I get to drive out there and I get to get on that plane and just go. I ain't worried about nobody checking nothing. There's nothing like that. I just want you to know heaven is going to redefine what you think life is all about. You think you know right now, it's okay. It's all you know. But it gets better and better. The better days are actually ahead of us. Isaiah 65, 17 and 18 says this. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. 
The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create for I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. Heaven will change your definition of joy, change your definition of excitement, change your definition of freedom, change your definition of living. You're not going to be looking back going, oh, if I could just go back down to Polk County. I promise you right now that is not going to happen. No death. No sadness. No loss. No pain. No taxes. If, If... You see, here's what we got to watch for. If we believe sin is fun and righteousness is boring, then it proves that we've already been deceived. We bought into the lie because here's what I've learned. Sin only robs, depletes, and destroys life. And righteousness is what builds and heals and blesses us. And when we get our proper perspective in life, it moves us forward and higher because I realize there's something more to live for than just here right now. And that changes everything. Boredom in heaven is like my second marriage. It'll never happen. Amen. Turn to three folks and tell them, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Yes. What will heaven be like? Number two, you're going to have a new body. Somebody right now. I, I, I thought some old Pentecostals would run the aisles right there in this place. Philippians chapter 3, verse 21. Read it loud. Read it proud. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his. No aging, no pain, no sickness, no wrinkles, no sagging, no spanks, nothing. No reason for a nip and tuck. It's all going to be good. In Luke 24, the Bible says that when Jesus rose from the dead, he went to see his disciples. And he walked through a closed door, through a wall, and he appeared to them in his glorified body, his resurrected body, which you and I will have. He walks in and they say, he says, touch me. Touch the scars. They were able to handle him because if he had been a spirit, they never could have handled him. Therefore, he had a body, but it was glorified. There was something to touch. You and I will have a glorified body when that happens. And you'll be able to move if, 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 if like Christ, we're going to be walking through whatever. There'll be no hindrance, no barriers to our ability to move, to travel. To, 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 oh, would you just turn to somebody, look them in the eye and say, tell them, hey, I'm going to look so good in heaven. Just go ahead and just, just tell them, right now, I'm going to look so good in heaven. I'm, I'm working on here, but heaven's going to be amazing. What will heaven be like? Here's, here's the third thing. Your emotions will be fully alive fully alive Psalm 16 says in his presence there's joy to the max we get hints we get tastes we get bumps but he's going to dial it up and rip the dial off you're going to be living in that moment laughter joy peace excitement like you have never experienced in your life how do I know that because the God who made you the emotions came from him and in his presence all of that comes to life the way it was always supposed to be what's another thing that heaven's going to be like you'll have no more temptation addictions gone no more struggle of wrestling on the inside with should I or should I not gone weakness is broken why because your sanctification process is completed it's always in process here it will be finished once you make it to heaven it's done filled with a passion to know and love God will overtake your life oh here's another thing in in, in heaven you're going to be busy you're going to be busy Some of y'all think, I know, I heard, well, we're going to do sit around on clouds. 
Eat a bowl full of manna, order some more. Like, how's this thing go down? Like, what's it going to No, no, you're going to be busy. Can I remind you, the Garden of Eden was God's original plan, and it was to be a piece of, it was to be heaven-like for his people. He puts Adam and Eve in it, and in Genesis 2.15, he tells Adam, I want you to guard and keep the garden. I want you to work the garden. I want you to take care of it. He gave Adam a job as soon as Adam got here. He said, now, let's go to work. Let's get this thing done. You are going to have a job. Let me show you. Luke chapter 19, verse 17 says, this well done good servant because you have been faithful in a very little you shall have authority over 10 cities can I I want you to understand something based on how you and I live here there's going to be rewards given there and it's going to determine levels of authority that we're going to be in charge of regions and domains that you will be watching over you will have a job you're going to it's going to be boss I mean you finally you get the key to the house like you get to you get to run the place we will have Roles that we will serve heaven on will be rewarded and promoted and will serve and live Jesus in that next season. If I, oh, if I had time to run down the whole line as to what the time frame of the future looks like, you would understand more. But we will be in heaven for a while, then we come back to this earth and we rule this earth. And God says, for my people who have served me well, I'm going to distribute authority across regions of this earth and you will be in charge. Number six, when you get to heaven, you're going to keep learning and keep discovering stuff. You're not going to be a know-it-all. No, because we're not God. He's infinite. We are finite. So we will not become like God. We will, the angels don't know everything. The Bible tells us that when we, in, in, in this earth, when we declare things that we see God has shown us, the angels stop and listen because they're not even aware of the full things that are in God's heart. They still discover you and I will be in a learning process. That's good news for me because it'd be horrible to get to a place, know it all, and like, okay, so there, nothing excites, nothing ignites, nothing. Man, look at that. The, the awe would be gone, but you and I will continue learning, continue discovering on and on and on. Number seven, you're going to be reunited with your saved family and friends. How many of you have somebody waiting on you there right now that you can, you're looking forward to seeing one day? Come on, man. That, that's, that reunion is going to be amazing. Second Samuel chapter 12 says that David, King David, one of his sons died, passed away as an infant, as a, as a, as a young boy, just a couple of days old. And David said, I can't bring him back to where I am, but I can go to where he is. He's showing us, giving us a picture that there's going to be that reunion. That children, if you've lost a child, if you, if you unfortunately went through a, a, a time in, in your pregnancy and you, 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 you lost a child, that baby is waiting on you in heaven and growing. There's, there's a promise. Cindy and I had two kids there. Uh, they're waiting on Isaiah and Gabrielle. But Cindy's mom is waiting on us there. We got family waiting on us there. We're, it's going to be a reunion of reunions. First Thessalonians 4 tells us that we'll all be reunited together again. And by the way, just so you know, Luke, Luke 20 does say that there's not going to be no marriage in heaven. Cindy has argued with God over that. She said, I've got to stay married. And so, but it, I'm, it just, uh, no husbands and wives. Sorry about that. So let me kind of give you a rundown real quick. There will be no more atheists, scoffers, haters, social media, pain, crying, cancer, discrimination, temptation, grief, regret, wrinkles, surgeries, cavities, political commercials, scandals, terrorism, racism, sexual confusion, pornography, sex trafficking, anger, rage, cussing, verbal abuse, calories, weight gain, presidential elections, abortions, funerals, drunk drivers, ambulances, police chases, overdose, mortgage payments, retirement, hospitals, wheelchairs, family feuds, arguing, lying, alarm systems, taxes, Snake bites, dog bites, jellyfish stings, mosquito bites, fear, anxiety, boredom, brokenness, sleep. We're going to be in heaven, y'all. Everything is going to be right. Turn to someone and tell them, it sounds good to me. Just don't want to go right now. Just, just, yeah, that's right. Just, yeah, that's right. Just, yeah, put that in. Some of you go, well, I don't know about that. Like, that sounded pretty good right now because of some of the things I'm going through. I, I, I know, I know, I know. And the goal of God's word is to give us an anticipation, an excitement, go, dang. 
can we go now? And until you understand the value and the blessing and the increase and what that's going to be like, you and I will not be excited and looking for the coming of Jesus. Because when he comes back, y'all, we out of here. We gone. Like, bam, here we go. Like, this has been the focus of this. That's the purpose of this life that we're living in. Hey, man, I agree. Thank you, Philip. Indiana Jones he was always searching for treasures. Always looking for the next relic to get his hands on. Ark of the Covenant. Holy Grail. Always trying to get something. But I want you to understand that, that you and I, quite honestly, are also on treasure hunts. This is biblical. We are on the hunt that as we live our lives here, there are treasures we will put our hands on when we get to heaven that the Bible tells us about. The last thing you want to do is get to heaven and you wasn't looking for nothing. And they're passing out stuff, and he goes, oh, Scott, I'm sorry, would you step aside? i got to give these out. What, well, can I get? No, you, you, that, that wasn't your focus, so let's just keep on going. I want to show you what this is, because the Bible tells us that there's five crowns that are going to be distributed in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just as much about your faith as to serve him right this week. We need to know what our Bible says about this world, but especially that. This is temporary. It's passing. James said it's like the vapor coming off of a coffee cup. It's there, and then it's gone. That's how fast this life is. How you, like over 40, can admit life goes fast? You who are 20 and 30, you ain't got a clue. Sit there and just look at me with an attitude. But I promise you, 40s and 50s, mm-hmm, get some kids. Get some kids. You're like, oh, my God, my kids are how old? When did that happen? I'm just telling you. And it picks up speed. There's five crowns. And these are written about in in our Bible, Paul, the, the quarterback of Christianity, as we call him, uh, he's writing about this in view of the ancient Greek games that were played, the Olympiad. The, as they would go and they would compete, he wrote in, in, in this mindset of what these crowns were. These crowns in Paul's day were these wreaths, these, these, uh, these entwined together braided wreaths that they would put on the victor's head after winning a sprint, after winning what, whatever the triathlon was. They, when they won that, they would put them on the podium and they would put the crown on their head. Head, and it was this being the picture that Paul was writing about as he spoke of these crowns. The first crown that is going to be given in heaven that you have the opportunity of receiving is called the crown of righteousness. That's not just metaphorical. No, there, there's going to be the distribution of congratulations. The crown of righteousness is given to all of those. It's a reward for all those who kept the faith. In spite of the struggles, in spite of the difficulty, in spite of what culture's opinion was, in spite of the pushback, in spite of bad things happening to good people, and I didn't throw my faith and way in God. I held on to him. I chose to trust him even when I didn't fully understand him. I fought forward with my faith. I served God's purpose to the end. I never stopped pursuing Jesus, and I've been looking for his coming. The Bible says those who are looking for him and are pursuing in spite of what happens in life, I just didn't quit. I kept coming after him. Boom, a crown of righteousness is going to be given to you because you didn't quit. Would you turn to three people and tell them, don't stop, get it, get it. That was your chance to bounce with me, but that's okay. Number two, there's a crown of life. A crown of life. These are all straight out of your Bible. This is the reward for enduring trials and temptations. Trials and temptations to the point of even persecution or even martyrdom. That you are persecuted and hit because of your faith. You're attacked in that. Sometimes that'll be family. That could be a spouse. Some of you are married to someone who doesn't love or confess Christ and you are in the battle I want you to know God sees and God keeps account 
of that that you're going through, that struggle to continue to serve him and honor him every way that you know how, even though you, you kind of pay for it emotionally, you pay for it in the home when those things are hitting. God is taking record, and he says, I know how to take care of this. Sometimes it's, it's, it's places. We're reaching a place right now where government, oh, just keep looking at me. The culture we're living in right now. It's not popular to be a Christian. It's not popular to have beliefs that are biblically based. And when you stand for this word, there's pushback. And there's things that we will lose out on because, of, oh, it's only getting worse. It's not Democrat, Republican. It's people. It's the culture. It's where we're living. It's where things are headed. Go ask the folks in Africa where tens of thousands of Christians just lost their lives in Africa because they're standing as Christians. We don't even hear the persecution around the world. Those who are saying, I will not deny him. He gave his life for me. I give mine in serving and honoring him. They won't back out. When terrorists want to take the heads off of Christians, but they refuse to bend and bow and roll. You take my head, but you'll never take my life. Oh, those are two different things completely. When you have people that are standing, God says, I see that. And there will be a crown of life given to those who have endured the trials. You went through the temptations and you stayed faithful to me in that process. A crown of life will be given to you. It's going to be worth it. Number three, there is the incorruptible crown. It's a big, sexy word. It means it's not going away. This is a reward, watch this, for living a disciplined life. A Bible-centered life. Not perfect, but in pursuit. I chose to do it his way, not my way. I chose his lifestyle, not my lifestyle. I'm not taking scripture and making it fit my world. I'm going to make my world fit his. I'm doing things different. It's all about him. I'm going to study my Bible. I want to know him. Prayer, worship, serving, those things are aligning you for an incorruptible crown. Activate. I'm pursuing him for nine months of study. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot tell me that does not apply to the incorruptible crown. Small groups, the convictions of our life. I'm not swayed by cultural standards. I'm, I want to live this Christ honoring life day in and day out. I'm going to live with an eternal view. This is temporary, so I'm going to set my sight on him. And as long as i got a face full of Jesus, that helps me make the right decisions. I'll do this to earn the incorruptible crown, which is an eternal crown. It'll be given to people. Number four, there's the crown of rejoicing. This is a good one right here. This crown of rejoicing, or it's also called the soul winner's crown. It's for leading other people to Jesus, faith in Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, sharing your faith is not a side issue in heaven. Sharing your faith and winning people, leading them to the understanding and a knowledge, a revelation of who Jesus is, that right there is primary. And God says, I've got a crown set aside just for those folks who are willing to share me. They're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm giving crowns on that day. Will you and I be in line for that crown? That's the question. And then number five, there's the crown of glory. The crown of glory. This, this reward is given to pastors, spiritual leaders, and teachers who are serving God's people with their lives so that their words are instructional and upbuilding. That when our Polk CI team are showing up to meet men as they're coming out of prison and they're throwing arms around them, Telling them, welcome out and welcome home. The next era of your life is about to kick in right now. Oh, 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 ladies and gentlemen, right there. there, there there's a crown of glory. I, I saw that. There's accounting records going on because you can't serve him that way and not be in line for the promises of heaven. There is a, there's a crown given to those people who lead spiritually because those folks are also going to be specifically checked and scrutinized for every word that they speak, the motive behind it, that you didn't take the opportunity of influencing people for your good. You made sure you use that properly to point them towards me. It'll be checked. Every word I speak from this platform, I will give account for before God. 
I'm going to, I'm going to have a, a, a job review that I'm going to have to have when I get to heaven. And I've got to tell you right now, I'm just like, oh, Lord, have that right. you got to keep an eternal eye. As long as you got an eye right there, you ain't got time to get in the way of his glory. No, it's all yours. Are you kidding me? Keep me back here. I don't want to ever lose focus of who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, there's five crowns. That we, can, that we can receive, a crown of righteousness, a crown of life, the incorruptible crown, the crown of rejoicing, the crown of glory. And I want you to understand these crowns are powerhouses. I, I just, I'm just going to ask you, do you see that you align with, will you be receiving one of these crowns? Because I want you to know something, you and I, day in and day out, the decisions we make will affect these crowns. Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. Check this out, everyone. Read it with me. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one takes your crown. There is an attempt to rob the reward out of your life, both here and there. There is an attempt to undermine that. Why, why is that so important? Why, why, would we, why would the crowns means something so big because Revelation 4 tells us, watch this, that after we have received our crowns, guess what? We won't ever wear them because Revelation 4 says we will then come and lay them at the feet of Jesus. Have you ever gone to a birthday party and you didn't take a gift? Don't recommend it. <laughs> On that day when Jesus is being coronated as King of Kings and Lord of Lords and billions are gathered to honor him, I want to walk in and I don't just want five crowns. I want him to go, Scott, I had to make up more crowns, son. You understand? And I want to walk in with my wheelbarrow and I just want to kind of dump them at his feet. I don't deserve to wear those crowns. Why is that? Because you wore a crown of thorns so I could wear a crown of life. Your crown, you took the crown that really belonged on my head and I give them back to you. All glory and honor belongs to you. Had you not been for me, I would have lost it a long time ago. I never would have earned anything. It's because of your goodness and your faithfulness, your kindness to me. It was your reach. It was your love. It was you dying for me when I wasn't worth dying for. It was you being a friend to me when everybody else walked out. It was you encouraging me when I wanted to quit and shut it down. But because you had been so good to me, you give me gifts, I I bring them back to your feet. They belong to you and you alone. To God be the glory for great things he has done. Stand to your feet all through this room. I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. And with all of this, nothing I've said to this point qualifies for that place being called heaven. One verse makes heaven, heaven. Revelation 22, verse 4 says this. They will see his face. Do you understand what I just read to you? You will see Jesus face to face. That is heaven. On the other side, can I tell you what hell is? It's where his presence is not. Flames don't make hell, hell. Brimstone does not make hell, hell. Weeping, welling, gnashing of teeth does not make hell, hell. What makes hell, hell? The absence of the presence of God. Even when you and I are living in our jacked up, screwed up, you've got to be kidding me state. 
the grace and the mercy of God is still coming at us. He's protecting and working in our lives. He's always active. He's always working on our heart. The vacuum of God's love and presence sucked out of our life, it stops. Life quits. But we will see him. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a reality coming when the church of Jesus Christ is out of here. That day is still coming. Oh, I'm going to have to preach on the rapture one day up here inside of Free Life Chapel. I need to remind you of what that's going to be like that day. Can you imagine people who love Jesus? They're the pilots on the plane and they're sucked out of the cockpit. People driving cars down the road and we're out of here. Can you imagine kids in a classroom listening to a spirit-filled teacher teaching about math? And all, they turn around and psh, she's gone. Can you, uh, the, the, what's going to happen around the world? Some of you think, oh, uh, Scott, that's just kind of weird. Okay, you know the Bible says that people are going to scoff about the coming of Jesus and say, well, where is he? Well, where is he? Why hasn't he come yet? He said, when they start scoffing, lift up your head. Your redemption is drawing. Let them start jawing. Let them start talking. I know what I'm doing. I got a plan and I work this on my timeline it's going to be worth it is what I'm trying to tell you all the hell all the worry the tears the fight the coming in in spite of not 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 feeling it I'm, I'm just pressing I, I'm tired and I'm run down and I got hurt and I got dropped and they did this but I'm going to keep moving because I got nothing to go back to he's brought me too far to quit now I got to keep reaching Jesus help a brother out right now it's going to be worth the fight the persecution the laughter the temptation the addiction struggle keep pressing towards Jesus the account is growing in heaven and they keep marking up another crown another crown another crown another crown they're going to be bestowing there's going to be a day of releasing crowns and rewards into your life it's going to be worth it somebody shout yes it is it's going to be worth it don't you forget you keep an eye on heaven set your affections on things above, not things below. Heaven. Jesus. Eternity. Not this. If you're living right there, today's the opportunity to change your perspective. This is leaving really quick. It's like trying to spend Monopoly money at Publix today. It's not going to work. What matters is what will last forever. Would you bow your heads in this room today? If you're here and you say, Scott, I don't really know Jesus that way. I've not, I've not asked him into my heart. And I want to get it right. I want the hope that there's more to life than this. I want to meet the one who gave his life for me, that can I, I can experience eternity with him. I see what you're talking about. There's more to live for than just what I can see here. I'm thankful for family, I'm thankful for job, career, dating, all that, it's all good, but I, there's gotta be more, there's gotta be more. I know it and I feel it in, in my heart. And today, I'm not saying I'm going to do this perfect, but I'm saying I will give my life to Jesus and do the best I can. That's all he's asking, folks. He's not asking you to make promises you can't keep. He's just asking you to take a step towards him and let him work out the rest. And if you heard it, and you say, Scott, I want to receive Jesus into my life. I want to say yes to him. I want to start this journey. I don't want to miss heaven and schedule hell in my life. On the count of three, if you're saying, that's me, i got to pray this prayer. Shoot your hand in the air. One, two, three. Right now, where are you? Put those hands up. Hold those hands. Hold it right there. That's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Everybody in this room, pray this prayer. Jesus, I give you me. I want you. I don't want 
to spend eternity in hell. I choose heaven. I choose you. So today, I give you my life. Forgive me of all my sin, all my past. I receive your promises, your love, forgiveness, and future. Today, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. That's my promise, and I'm grateful for it. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. And Father, I pray for every man and woman in this room, those who know you, those who are serving you, that we don't get distracted by things that are so temporary and so small and insignificant that we get distracted from and we, we fringe on giving up our crowns. But God, we refocus on you. We fill our heart and a mind full of who you are. We set our affections on things above, not below. We, we pursue you. We honor you. We will serve you with our lives. We will do your interest. We will work your agenda. Work on us. Change us. Holy Spirit, convict us. Guide us and lead us. But let us be your ambassadors in this earth that please you and put smiles on your face. Be glorified in our lives, in my family, in my church, through my career, through my energies, talents, abilities, my finances. Take all all that I am and use it for your glory because that is all that matters in the end of time. We worship and thank you and love you for this today. In Jesus' name, everybody shout it. Amen, 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 amen. We really hope this message encouraged you. For more encouraging messages, please check out our website, freelifechapel.org. Until then, hope to see you next time.